P10 panels. Um, who here uses them? Yeah, most of us. Well, you know all about it. Um, still not convinced. Honestly, they're great, but here's some general info. Um, 32 by 16 LEDs, so they're 512 LEDs per panel. That's three universes. Um, it starts to add up very quickly. Somewhere between one and three amps, depending on the brightness. Uh, with version nine, uh, sorry, 1.9 of the Falcon 5 player, you can actually adjust that brightness on the screen. Um, I believe version two is going to have the ability to do that from your sequence, uh, or at least on a timed basis. So. I find these are a little bit dull in the late afternoon. It's, you know, eight o'clock my show starts, um, and that's still in you know, fairly bright sunlight. Um, it's they're not quite bright enough. <laughs> I had to put the X lights on me. <laughs> um, but come you know nine ten o'clock at night, they're way too bright if you if you crank the brightness up. So hence, um, it'd be nice to be able to adjust that brightness on the fly. It's going to happen with version two of Falcon Pie Player apparently. Um, there are five volt power supply. Uh, these ones that we buy, which are the $11 El Cheapo ones from Ray, they're a 1.8 scan, uh, which means they look terrible on video. You've got to adjust your video recording to actually get a reasonable video. Uh, otherwise, you end up with lines and it flickers and it looks terrible. And in fact, if we had a look earlier when it was on the screen, you can barely understand what I'm saying. Um, but that looks fine to the eye. Um, they're 11 bucks each. They're not all the same RGB order. I bought a set last year and a set this year off Ray Wu. They are identical. They're the same stickers on the back. They are exactly the same. I, I've put the two of them down and can't tell the difference. One is RGB, one is RBG. So I made this panel up on my Wednesday or something like that, plugged it in, turned it on and went, what the heck? I've got three panels, green and one blue. So it wasn't, you know, I never actually realised, it wasn't until I actually started swapping panels out that I realised I had two separate orders, two separate um, orders, RGB orders. Different hole spacings. Hey, Benny. <laughs> so if you are 3D printing or if you're getting um, connectors made up, it may only suit the ones that you are ordering now. Uh, and then channel counts add up very quickly. You know, I've got a, Yeah, only the holes. Um, the mounting holes. They come with the little um, magnets and the little adapters and all the rest of it. They're designed for inside in a big metal panel. You clip them on, you don't have to worry about connecting them up to anything the way we do it. Um, personally, I 3D printed for these. Um, total cost of uh, a couple of bucks for my, uh, for my three by three panels. I got three 3D printers. <laughs> Let's not go there. We might do something later. Um, there's different types. There's P4s, P6s. There's indoors, outdoors, different scan rates. Um, you've just got to be aware of that when you actually make your order. Uh, controllers. There is a heap of different controllers you can buy. Uh, the one that I use is the BeagleBone Black with an Octa scroller. Uh, it can control up to 64 boards, eight lots of eight boards. Uh, there's a few guys in the States which are pushing that limit or even got a pair of Beagle Bones. Um, Raspberry Pi will also drive them with a, an adapter board. I've seen some of them specify three outputs and around 12 panels per output. Um, a few of the other ones that I think I had a quick look there on some of the forums, they're up 2 by 12 or 2 by 10. Um, Andrew's Chocolate Block, which is supposed to be coming out next week. Um, Alex has got a little standalone controller. David AVD's got a card. Um, and there's other... Uh, the Linson cards, there's a bunch of other different controller cards that we can use. They're more handy on um, some of the, the P4s, P6s, that the Beagle Bones and the Pies won't drive easily. Connections, you can, I found this one on the one of the uh, Falcon Pie um, pages, but you can connect them up however you want. Um, you don't have to follow a particular order, you don't have to, you could have them vertically or wired up or horizontally or uh, in this case, I've actually got two outputs of two screens. You could have one output of four screens. There's no particular order. Um, you don't have to follow anything, but then comes the setup in, in this case, Falcon Pi Player, which will actually give you the right order of the screens. Um, you need to set up universes for them. 
that was again one that I just grabbed off the web page quickly. Um, that's how you set up some universes. We've, we've all played with Falcon Pie Player, I'm assuming. Um, but then the, this is a screen that matters. <laughs> and this is the way you lay out your screens. So in this case, it's a, what, two by four. Um, and sometimes you think, oh, this is how you lay it out. And you, you do that and then you have a look at your screen and you're all in the wrong order. Start playing around. The arrow direction is the actual direction of the arrow on the back of the screen, there are arrows up. I could turn that one upside down, wouldn't matter if I just had the arrow pointing down. It doesn't make any difference. Um, I've actually got my little screen that I've got hyphen. Some of you guys know the history of that, the hyphen from the King's Cross Coke sign. I actually have five screens jammed in that thing and they're all different. Um, one of the, the middle one of the three, which is set up similar to that, is actually upside down because it wouldn't fit the other way. Um, there was a little tab sitting out and it wouldn't fit. Um, I was able to notch the board and actually have it upside down. Makes no difference to the controller once it's set up in here. Um, there's different types of control. You can have them stand alone, such as my little setup here. Um, I think by the looks of it, you're getting ready to actually control yours from your PC, are you? <laughs> um, in bridge mode, so you can drive it as you drive your lights. It acts as basically a another controller, uh, an E31 receiver from your PC, from a Pi, from whatever. Um, a master, so that the way we drive most of our Pies, but there are some guys that actually drive their show from a Beagle Bone Black, um, and that's the one that also drives their screens. So you could actually send the data out for the rest of your show from a Beagle Bone Black. Where would you do that? Maybe if you've got um, two or three of these running in close proximity, um, just as tune two sites. Uh, and you could also do that as a standalone. If you just want to tune two and a little effect over top of it, you're not worried about sequencing it as part of your show, you could either do that as a master in its own little network or you can have it as a standalone. Uh, all remote, which just gets sync packets, and I think sync packets are every second or thereabouts. 16 frames. 16 frames, is it? Okay. But that's a heck of a lot better than three universes per panel and what am I running? Um, 33 panels, no, 38 panels. Um, so it's only a fairly small display. 48 panels, sorry, 48 panels. Yeah, I forgot those other ones. Um, yeah, it's a heck of a lot of data to start spitting down your network. Um, you know, it, it puts me over 100,000 channels, um, whereas my network's sitting on about 27,000 channels. It, it's actually tied in with all my security cameras. It's the one network, which you're going to hate the idea of, because uh, you're doing the networking talk, aren't you? Yeah. Um, what do you need to make them work? Five volt power supply. Um, some sort of controller. Um, it's your choice how you do it. Beagle Bone Black, Pi, standalone controller, Alex's, whatever. Um, some sort of network connection or wireless USB adapter, unless you want it standalone. So you need to be able to, to talk to the to the system. Micro SD card, the USB stick. This one here is actually running directly off the micro SD card. There's no USB stick in it. The problem with that is corruption. Um, if my USB gets corrupted, I can swap out another one, set it up in a minute. Um, if my micro SD gets uh, corrupted, I've got to reformat <coughs> that, or I've got to set it back up. It takes a little bit more time. Um, some sort of frame, something to hold them together. You know, I 3D printed mine. Um, some guys are just getting uh, perspex and drilling holes in it. Some getting some professionally made. It's up to you. Um, and they're not waterproof. Well, these ones aren't waterproof. You can buy the waterproof panels. Uh, the waterproof panels are a little bit dearer, but only the front is waterproof. The back is still not waterproof. So you still need some sort of framing behind to get keep water out of the electronics to control your power supply. Um, some guys are using, well, I use Perspex. Some guys uh, are using, uh, what was it, um, tablecloths? Yeah, yeah, you use a tablecloth. Yeah. Um, it's up to you how you do it. 
uh, miter in a wood frame with perspex on the front and then a, a marine fly back. Um, but I've also got drain holes at the bottom where all the cables go in, so if it does get a bit of water in, um, yeah, it will drain out the bottom. Uh, I haven't had a problem. I only had 18 panels out in the rain last year uh, and didn't have a problem. And that's it.